on this video, I'm guessing you're looking for a little more romance in your life. Hello my lovely friends, it's Margaret. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to be talking about five of my favorite romances. Now I think anyone who's looking for some romance recommendations may be interested in this video, but this is technically part three in a five-part series recommending books for the amazing reader. This one is specifically for teen romance. Speaking of teen romance, come here real quick. Hey, so there are gonna be five books that I'm gonna recommend to you, but then I need your help with the next five, because those are the ones that I am thinking about reading, and I need to know which ones you think I should read. I am doing five of these, so I will have all of the other recommendations videos linked down below in the description box, just in case you're interested in what I'm recommending to the other teams, or you somehow clicked on this and are on the wrong video. We are going to start out with one that was real big when I first started on booktube, and hasn't been talked about nearly as much because the series is finished, but I still think that it is a fun romance to read. That romance is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. In this, we are are following Stella and Michael. Here's the thing, Stella is a very successful career woman. She knows how to work the algorithm like nobody's business. She's in love with spreadsheets. Stella is also autistic, and while she finds that that is an asset in her professional life, there are some areas in her personal life where she feels that it is causing a little bit of a, we'll say a little bit of friction. She's been told that she really just doesn't do the whole sex relationship thing, and she decides, you know what, the thing that I have an issue with, it's clearly because I do not have enough practice. Couldn't be anything about the people that I am dating and their attitudes towards me as a person. So she decides she is going to hire someone to teach her how to be better at the whole romance sex thing, and she hires Michael. Now Michael is a male escort and his family has been in some financial trouble, and the money that Stella is offering him could really help his family out in this particular what's going on. Uh, however, they do run into a little bit of trouble keeping things professional. First off, I think this is going to be great for fans of the movie Pretty Woman, because this is kind of like a reverse Pretty Woman situation that we're dealing with. With Stella and Michael. This is definitely for the people who have complicated relationships with their family because Stella's relationship with her family is very complicated and I liked how the book handled that and how it showed like it's a very real personal kind of depiction of how Stella is treated by her family. And I also love that we do have representation of a wonderful, caring family that's also complicated, but like very loving on Michael's side. So we get kind of like the full spectrum of what can be going on with family. And I think that a lot of how Michael is able to relate to and support Stella throughout this novel really does tie back to the fact that he had a loving and supportive family. Another thing that I really enjoyed about this is the way that it navigates women's pleasure and also navigates like a lot of Stella's hang-ups and the reason that she gets the feedback that she gets is that she does not have supportive partners. I really liked that plot line and how it was handled and if you like like if that is something that intrigues you you also see a bit of that in The Heart Principle which is the third book in this series. The one thing I will say is that there is a scene where people have talked about Michael being a bit possessive and that they didn't like how that sat with them. I can see that criticism. I can also see why that is something that might work for the two people in this novel. It's 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 really just a personal preference and taste thing in my opinion. So just know that going in. I just enjoyed the series and had such a good time with this book. After that, I have a YA for the K-pop girlies, and that is Once Upon a K-Prom by Kat Cho. This novel is following Elena and Robbie. These two grew up together and were best friends in childhood. They do keep in touch for the immediate period after Robbie's move, but then he ends up getting recruited for a K-pop band and communication kind of just drops off between them. Now here's the thing. Before he left, Robbie and Elena made a pact that if they did not have dates for senior prom, they would go to senior prom together. And so Robbie shows up out of the blue at her doorstep like, hey, you remember that pact that we made when we were 10? I'm here to keep up my end of the bargain. Elena has a lot of stuff going on at the moment and this may not be the most welcome person to have shown up at her doorstep. This is a super sweet friends to lovers romance, almost like a second chance romance, even though they weren't like a couple when they were 10, because that would be weird. But they are having the second chance at friendship. And I really liked watching them, first of all, navigate that and then deal with the feelings that were coming up about each other as a result. I also really like the conversations that this novel has about fame, specifically in regards to K-pop idols. There's just a lot of oversight and dictating of how they can live their lives in their contracts. And if you have known anything about that world, it just, like, this is doing such a good job of tackling that and really 
giving you a picture of what it is like inside the life of someone who is having to live this way. I also really like the way that it navigates family and friendship. Elena is in her junior or senior year of high school. I can't quite remember. She is not really into the idea of prom, which makes us even more hilarious. She has other priorities. There is like a little rec center that she is invested in and she's trying to save. She's also dealing with the fact that she's trying to figure out who she is outside of the context of her family and outside of the context of her friendships. Like who is she as a person if you take all of those things things away. I really liked being able to go through this coming of age journey with Elena. I found her to be a very relatable character. Like just being able to like read through and be like, wow, I understand why you made that decision because boy, would I have made the same decision probably too. It's one of those books that I felt like read me as much as I read it. Very very interesting experience. I absolutely adore it. Highly recommend it. It's just so sweet and cute and just happy. I just like if you need something to lift your spirits, read this book. In a slight tonal shift, let's talk about The Blonde Identity by Ali Carter. In this, we have a woman who wakes up in the middle of Paris with no memory of who she is, doesn't even know her name. All she has are the clothes on her back and the things in her pockets. She wakes up and very quickly realizes that she is the subject of an international manhunt. She very quickly assumes that, huh, I must be a spy, only to have that, like, thoroughly trounced by another spy who happens to know that she is the identical twin sister to someone who is a spy. It also happens to be that this man is very hot and while he doesn't want to be helping her is like I should probably not let this chick die. If you want a fast pace around the world jaunt with two people falling in love while also running from multiple government agencies, this is the novel for you. One of the reasons that I love this is because I'm just a sucker for begrudging allies who fall in love. Like these two are having to work together. They're trying to figure out why so many people are after her, what she did, but they're also learning about each other and starting to be drawn to each other and there's a lot of sexual chemistry and they're like, huh, you're hot. Kind of weird that I'm thinking about you as much as I am when we're currently running for our lives. Like that is the entire vibe that they both, uh, that is the entire thing that they are both dealing with and it's really just hilarious to watch. It's also very funny how like he initially is like, oh, this is not who I'm looking for. I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna leave this woman alone. And then he, he has to go back because like, ugh, crap, she's gonna die without help because she doesn't know anything about this world or what is going on. And it's very funny watching her learn and navigate that world and the kind of, mm, the way that this is solved in the end, very fun. The next book we're going to be talking about is another YA and this one is a retelling because it would not be a romance recommendations video without a retelling involved. That book is going to be Where the Rhythm Takes You by Sarah Doss. Now this is a retelling of Persuasion by Jane Austen, aka one of my favorite Jane Austens and also one of the most underrated Jane Austen novels out there. This novel is set in Tobago and we are following Raina. Her family owns a hotel. This hotel was kind of her mother's passion project. Raina has kind of taken over the reins of this hotel because her mother has passed away. Two things happen to Raina to just like kind of turn her life upside down. Number one, her father lets her know that he is considering selling the hotel, which Raina is like not on board with at all because this is her mom's legacy. She's expecting like, I'm supposed to pick up this legacy. I'm supposed to do this for my mom. Like this is kind of how I stayed close to her since she passed away. And then her childhood best friend comes back from the States. He's part of a very famous DJ group and some of his friends have been like, hey, we're gonna take you back to this place that you talk about all the time where you spend all of your summers. Rena is not too happy about that because she kind of had a crush on this guy and they have not spoken since the last time that he was on Tobago. This novel did such a great job of reinterpreting persuasion, keeping the things that make persuasion the story that it is, but also bringing it into the modern age. I know a lot of the time when you try and do those retellings, there are things that just do not translate or are not translated well. Sarah Doss does a fantastic job of really capturing the essence of the story and being able to make that into a plot that makes sense for both the time and the setting. Obviously, if it's on this list, I had a great time with the romance. It's a little bit kind of like just funny and awkward because like his friends have no idea that they used to like really be into each other and that this is being very awkward and difficult for both of them. And because she is involved with the hotel, she's the one that his friends are like, hey, we want you to help us like make sure that like we have a great time and we're going all of these places. She had plans to like avoid them and not be around them and they end up roping her into the, those plans and it's just so funny how they just keep getting thrown into proximity with each other. I, the way that things kind of ended between her and Aiden, like there's a lot of complicated feelings on both sides in regards to that. Neither of them were perfect. I also really thought it was interesting how this tackles the idea of family and legacy 
versus what you want for your life and like stepping out of your parents shadow I think there's a, there is a lot of going on here with Reyna with her having to really examine what she wants from life when she is confronted with the idea that this hotel is going to be sold if you like an in charge type a main character this is definitely a fantastic book it's very interesting how Sarah Doss kind of navigated that and like hey this is a strength but it's also a weakness it would not be a romance recommendations list without recommending some Talia Hibbert I know y'all are expecting the Brown sisters here and like everyone and their mother is going to recommend the Brown sisters I'm gonna recommend one that I've read more recently and really enjoyed and that is the princess trap we are following Cherry and Reuben in this one Cherry is part of the administration team at a British school and she meets Reuben when he is there kind of getting an idea of what's going on in the school because he is considering giving them a grant so that they have a little bit of extra funds. She and Ruben really hit it off. He goes home with her and they get caught by paparazzi making out in the alley hit it off. It turns out that Ruben is a prince from a foreign country and to keep the paparazzi from like spreading that photo everywhere he's like hey this is my fiance which makes her part of the royal family which means that your deal with us means you cannot distribute this photo without our permission so bye. And then he has to go and explain to Cherry that he did just accidentally engage her to him. Cherry is kind of annoyed by this but she does agree to be his fake fiance for a year. This is one of the books that I read when I was doing my 30 and 30 project. I read it in just like one day and it's one of my favorite books that came out of that time. I am always a big fan of Talia Hibbert's writing and I really enjoyed watching Cherry and Ruben navigate this relationship that is kind of like it's not supposed to be a relationship they're faking it but they're also having to like pretend they're madly in love. Let's be honest who doesn't love a good fake dating slash fake fiance situation like that's always just it's fun. One of the things that stood out to me in this novel is the third act breakup. You know how sometimes there are like third act breakups where it's like you know I the way this whole thing went down I'm not like this doesn't make sense that you two are considering getting back together that's not what happens here and I love the way that it is like it's just such a smooth third act breakup if you can call a breakup smooth it's fantastic it's one of my favorite parts of the book which is a weird thing to say about a romance novel trigger warnings by the way for child abuse Ruben is abused by family and he has to like part of the entire thing is him dealing with that and I like the way that this book handles the idea of how child abuse affects how you think of having children yourself. I know there are going to be people who have a problem with how that is handled in this novel but I just like I really liked the very raw honest discussion that we have in the way that Ruben it has to sit down and really think through and examine his feelings. Like it's such a complex complicated thing to sit down and think about considering Ruben's past and I just I loved how Talia Hibbert handled this. Also want to point out that Talia Hibbert is the queen of the sexy scene. You can literally feel the sexual tension coming out of the book like it's just like is good. I did just review this in a recent wrap-up and talk about it in a vlog so if you're looking for more information about this book go ahead and check those out they will be linked in the description box. Getting into what I may be reading for Amazing Readathon. You never know like I don't I don't know if any of these options are going to work but I really want to read them so they are going on my pile of possibilities and if I have to course correct later I will. Now the first one on this list you may recognize from my try a chapter video where I tried a chapter from all of the romance books that were on my shelves. It was an even 10 that felt really good like just such a satisfying number to have in a video. I, mm, I'm i still not over the high that that gave me. The first one we're going to talk about is Well Met by Jen DeLuca. This involves a renaissance festival. It involves like she's back taking care of her to take care of her sister and she is helping her niece because her niece wants to be involved in this renaissance festival and then she meets a guy while she is setting up for the renaissance. It is going to be a good time. The next one will have me continuing on in a series and that is Party of Two by Jasmine and Guillory. I have loved all of the books in this series. Book number two made it to like my best books of the year. One of these years. I don't remember which year don't ask me time is fake okay very excited to get to this this just like sounds like it's going to be a good time I love the way that Jasmine Guillory does her romances so we'll see if I can pick this one up the next one we have is uh, the marriage game by Sarah Desai this is about like two people that are being forced to work in the same space because like her dad rented out the office to him and then was like oh no you're coming back from this thing that happened and trying to set up your own business I will cancel that lease or cancel that contract I will let you my daughter rent this office but then her dad has a heart attack and is in the hospital and so he the, the contract doesn't end up canceled and so now they both have to work in close proximity to each other it's gonna be so good it's, I'm gonna have a good time with this we also have one that I got as part of like being part of K like it was a free book for having a Kindle or something like that and that is role-playing by Kathy Yardley this involves Dungeons and Dragons from what I remember people telling me and if you know anything about me I'm obsessed with Dungeons and Dragons now like it's just it is it's not my whole personality I have a multifaceted personality but there are times you probably would think it was like I live 
for the days I get to play Dungeons and Dragons. I'm just, I, I, I have such a good time. It's, it's the best thing in the world. I enjoy it. So reading a book that involves it, why not? Also, this is a romance that has like two like older protagonists, not older, older, like they're not old. They're, I think he's 50 and she's 48, something like that. But like, they are not in their 20s. That's the point. And I just find that very refreshing. And the final option that I have here is one that I have been promising Aoife that I'm going to read. And I tried to read it during 30 and 30, but it just didn't work because I had other things I needed to read. And that is The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. I don't know much about this except that there is time travel involved, I think? Potentially? Not entirely sure. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna be one... 100% honest, I just go off of the vibes I get from people talking about it, especially when it comes to romance. I don't really read summaries anymore. Now that we've talked about the books, we need to talk about bookmarks. If you've watched the last two videos, you would know that I have an extra of this official readathon logo bookmark that I got because of how I ordered the bookmarks. If you are interested in potentially being the one that gets to take this guy home, what I need you to do is share the amazing readathon announcement video on your platform of choice. I will have the YouTube video linked down in the description box. Also, I will have the TikTok announcement linked down in the description box if that is your platform. After that, you are going to want to come back to whichever video is the video for your team. Leave in the comments what book you are looking forward to getting to for the Amazing Readathon and also what platform you posted the Amazing Readathon announcement on and what your handle is on that channel on that platform. This giveaway is going to be running until 11.59 Eastern Standard Time on June 1st and I will announce the winner on June 2nd during my sprints that start at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So there are 10 romance books that you may be interested in checking out for the Amazing Readathon. If you are team romance don't forget to let me know which of the five books on my little pile of possibilities you think I should read. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up. If you are looking for more romance recommendations for me I will have my video where I was reading the first chapter of every romance book on my shelves right up here. That is it for now my friends. Happy reading and I will see you later when we will talk about more wordy, nerdy things. Bye! Do you have to be making weird car noises while I am trying to film a video? Your belts need help. Like, get that taken care of.